So what is this cheeky little file? Well, I can't just tell you. It's a secret. So, what is it? Required by the Steam VR Unity plugin, it's a file that both enables and controls some of the mixed reality settings in Unity-based games. This video is coming out considerably later than I'd wanted, as I'd learned that Lib was about to remove significant functionality that would change how correct some of the information in this video would be. Back to the video though, and as Liv has removed support for Unity Steam VR Mixed Reality, it's increasingly important that you know how to create this file and what all of these settings do. We'll look at each one of them to find out what they do and how they can help you with your stream or recording. We'll get into what the file contains, but first a bit about how the Steam VR Unity plugin creates Mixed Reality. Relevant timestamps, as ever, are down below so you can skip to the sections you're most interested in. Unity spawns a camera, and then for each frame, it renders a pass for each of the background, foreground, and alpha images that you see on the mixed reality output. The background pass is simply the normal captured frame, but for the two at the top, the foreground and the alpha, the game injects a barrier. This is the clipping plane, and it's the location of where the foreground meets the background. This is important to know because some of the parameters that we can set in this file will help to determine where this boundary is drawn. So now, onto the actual parameters. Each of these parameters that I'll go through are case sensitive, so you'll need to make sure that you retype them precisely for them to work. There are six parameters which define where the virtual camera is. Positionally, X, Y, and Z, and then rotationally, roll in each of those three axes. If you don't have a tracked camera, these might simply be the exact location of your physical camera relative to the center of your play space. If you are using a track camera, this will be the offset from the tracker to the lens of your camera. You can see this in action in my first vacation simulator tutorial here. If you're using Live to do your calibration and you're using the Live Virtual Tracker, you'd probably want to leave this blank. I'm struggling to think of a scenario where you'd use both, but if anyone knows, let me down in the comments below. This one is quite straightforward. It's the vertical field of view of your physical camera and therefore the field of view of the virtual camera. It is a mandatory setting and from what I can understand from the Steam VR code, if it is omitted, it will probably make it crash. Culling is the act of removing things. So camera culling is about removing geometry that's no longer drawn. You can set both the near and far culling to only draw what's in this middle section here. Near culling is useful if you're in scenes with small rooms or close obstructions. You can set your near culling to remove walls or anything else in the way. Far culling, however, is much more about performance. In open world scenes, you may want to restrict the draw distance down from the default, which is 10 kilometers. This setting allows for downgrading the in headset experience to gain a bit more performance back. This is a straight multiplier, so a value of 1 is the same as not setting it at all, and 0.75 is a 75% resolution scale. You can use this setting to super sample. This setting has pretty much been depreciated in later versions, but at any rate has effectively been obsoleted by the per game resolution multiplier in Steam VR. Therefore, you should never really need to specify this parameter unless you want the same function, but with worse performance. As an interesting note, you may have noticed that when you pause a game by going into the Steam VR system menu, that some games get really blurry. This is the same setting that effectively halves the in-game render to get performance back while you're paused. Similar to the scene resolution scale, frame skipping allows us to trade visual fidelity for better performance. The way this works is not what I'd describe as intuitive. The way it works in code is that if you put in a setting of one, it skips one out of every two frames. A setting of two skips two out of every three, and so on. I guess it kind of makes sense if you're targeting 90 frames per second and you want to drop to 45 and then 30, but otherwise it just feels a bit clumsy to operate. It is, however, a useful setting if you need to claw back some performance. The next few settings deal with how the game knows whether to draw something in the foreground or not. 
The method that it employs is to create an artificial in-game boundary between the foreground and the background. This background is typically colored black and is only rendered in the foreground quadrants, the top two. Out of these two settings for near and far offset, far offset isn't used as far as I can see in any of the code. Near offset, however, is used and it changes the position of where the boundary is between the foreground and background. Positive values move the boundary further away from the camera, negative values move the boundary back towards the camera. This is the one that perhaps with the exception of the matrix I understand the least well, so I apologize for some vague language here. The HMD offset parameter is used in the get target distance method of the external camera class in the Steam VR Unity plugin. I'm not sure if this is the intention of the maths, however, it seems to accomplish a similar effect to the near offset, but it also incorporates an element of how far the camera is away from the head mounted display. On this basis, I would suggest that using the near offset will provide more reliable results, especially if you're planning on doing anything more exotic. In the quadrant view, the standard color used for keying out the background in the top left corner is black. This is often fine as it's rare for a game to use pure black in its scenes, but if you wanted to, you could use something like magenta or magic pink. In almost all cases though, using the alpha keying method is way better as it eliminates the scene between the foreground and background. Just as a side note, if you're following my tutorial on mixed reality compositing, then please make sure to take notice of the pinned comment there about using the background quadrant as the input for the foreground, just to make sure you never get any seams ever again. This is a strange one, as I think it must assume that developers were going to make games with mixed reality being at the forefront of their minds. In Unity, it essentially disables any game objects in the namespace Unity Standard Assets. Therefore, if a developer wasn't specifically developing with the Steam VR Unity plugin's mixed reality behavior in mind, then it could have some strange consequences. Ultimately, this will be game dependent on whether it does anything at all and could really break a game. I'd suggest leaving it as false or removing it completely by default, but please play around with it if you fancy and let me know down below if you found any good or bad behavior because of it. Nothing to do with Keanu Reeves here, but rather matrix math. Rather than specifying camera offsets using individual values for position and rotation, it's possible to specify your camera position using a 12 point matrix of, I assume, vectors. I'm not gonna pretend that I know how this works, but I assume that if you know how the maths works, that you'd be confident in supplying the right matrix values that relate to your camera's location. At any rate, Internally, it all gets translated back into the positional and rotational offsets anyway, so there's functionally no difference as to which one you use. It may be worth noting, however, that if you supply both, then the one that appears last will be the one that's used. This is also true if you specify any of the other parameters multiple times, that the last one specified will overwrite any of the prior ones. So that's all of the parameters. But there's one other thing that's interesting to note. The Unity Steam VR plugin by default watches the external camera.cfg file for any changes, and those are then applied almost immediately to the properties of the in-game camera. That means for automation purposes, it would be possible to use a bot to rewrite the file for things like FOV shifting to create a zoom. This is however broken on some titles, so please run a quick test to see if it works with your target game before spending too much time getting the automation part sorted. Okay, so now you know what I know about this somewhat secretive file. Despite the recent changes, it's still possible to create one of these files from Live. To do this, edit your hopefully already calibrated camera, click the details tick box, and then you can export either directly to a file or to the clipboard so you can paste over an existing file. The difference between Unity Full and the regular Unity option is that the Full option also includes the positional and rotational offsets, whereas the normal Unity one does not. As I'm not confident this functionality will remain in Live long term, I've also put a standard template on my GitHub, and you can download that from the link in the description. That's just about it. If you've got any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you next time.